Welcome biologists, we are looking at Ecosystem 6.3.1, Lesson Objective B, Biomass Transfer Through Ecosystems. Now this is part one, I'll have to split this video into two because it's quite a lot of content. So this is part one. So we're going to be looking at biomass transfers between different trophic levels. So it's going to include a bit of a recap back to GCSE just to remind you of bits and pieces. So you can pause and read this, but basically what we're, what we're saying here is that um, the, the energy from the sun is, half, is harnessed within plants through photosynthesis. Uh, and that is basically what drives um, our ecosystems. Without the energy from the sun, we wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be here because that is what is needed to drive our ecosystems and basically our survival. So a couple of definitions that we need to know about. We have trophic levels. This is a place within the food chain. This is taken from the mark scheme, that top one there, the place within the food chain. Um, so just going to skip to the bottom one, the producer. This is the one that fixes the carbon using sunlight, photosynthesis. So this is our plants, for example. We then have our primary consumer, which eats off feeds on the producer. Our secondary consumer, which eats off feeds off the primary consumer. And we can also go up to our tertiary or quaternary consumer, depending upon the food web or chain so if we look at a basic food chain for example loc locusts eat the maize lizards eat the locusts snake eat the lizards don't forget the arrows show where the energy be is being transferred okay <clears throat> so if we convert this into a pyramid of numbers we'd have uh, maize locust lizard and snake in that order uh, the numbers would decrease as you go further up the pyramid of numbers or through the food chain the numbers decrease um, so if you have a look at and apply those definitions just looked at so the trophic level there's a first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level our fourth trophic level we have our producer here at the bottom which is our maize our primary consumer which is our locusts secondary consumer our lizards and our tertiary consumer which is our snake in this particular example so as well as our pyramid of numbers we can have our biomass now biomass um, pyramid Biomass is the mass of a living material in a particular food chain or web. To calculate the biomass at each trophic level, you must multiply the number of organisms by their dry mass, as water obviously takes up mass as well. Important we know that this is in kilograms, not grams, not micrograms. It's taken in kilograms. The red box means it has been questioned on a mark scheme before, so well worth trying to remember the units used here. So there are advantages and disadvantages of using dry mass within a pyramid of mass. So if we're using dry mass, obviously because we're removing the water content, this is an advantage because it allows comparisons to be made between different organisms because different organisms will have different water content, which will in turn affect the whole biomass. So if we remove the effect of water, we can compare uh, a lot more uh, realistically and reliably between the different species however a disadvantage of this is obviously because we're removing the water um the organism won't survive this process so you are in fact killing off the organisms which brings ethical issues into it uh, so how do we calculate the dry mass um the energy of the dry mass and this is using something called a bomb colorimeter which you can see here in this image you put the sample of whatever it is you're testing in here so for example I don't know, it might be a locust, for example, dried locust. Um, what you then need, you burn the sample under high pressure of oxygen. You can see the oxygen inlet there. Um, and the temperature rise, you can see the thermometer here. The temperature rise of the water, because all this is in water, would be measured. And then you can use that to calculate the energy content of the, of the dry mass, of this case, the locust. And then use that to compare with other different organisms and species. So a couple of questions here to think about if you want to pause it and have a go. Um, first of all, the one first one is very popular in the exam, which by what factor does the biomass decrease? You can see obviously it decreases as you go up the food chain. By what factor does the biomass decrease between each trophic level? It does decrease by a power of 10 or a factor of 10 each time. Um, the biomass in each trophic level obviously as it's decreasing. Well, why? Why is it decreasing? And a couple of points here to note from the mark scheme. Not all biomass is eaten. For example, we can't eat bones and Animals don't usually eat the roots of plants. Some is transferred to the environment as heat, so obviously that's lost. Some is excreted as urine and feces, so again, lost to the environment. And then biomass is, some is indigestible, for example, cellulose.